What's up everybody and welcome back to another video and in this one what we're talking about is how to live off of dividends faster. How to maximize your dividend portfolio because often people, the number one complaint when it comes to dividend investing is that it takes too long, is that you have to have a huge massive portfolio and you need all these different things. We've done calculations on what the least amount you need to live off of dividend income is and it's roughly just below $300,000 depending on the yield and your expenses. Everybody's personal expenses and personal lifestyles do vary, so you have to calculate these according to your personal needs. But looking on some things, we calculated is roughly $300,000. We did that in another video. I will put a card up to that video up right now so you can see that if you want to go check that out. But let's talk about how to live off of dividends faster, maximize your portfolio's growth. So before I do that, all I ask if you enjoy the video, you make sure to give this one a thumbs up and you subscribe. You turn on post notifications for daily videos just like this one and leave a comment down below whether you're going to be using these little tactics to help your portfolio make most dividends as it can. Now let's get into it. So what we're looking at right here is my portfolio. Just looking on some different things. If you want to go get this portfolio, link is in the description and comments below, 100% free. You can copy and paste it, use that as foundation, whatever you might want to do. If you want to use M1 Finance as well, use the link in the description and the comments. Free $30 just for signing up. But enough of that talk. Let's talk about how to live off of dividends faster. So what we're seeing is a lot of people are aiming for dividend growth investing. And a lot of people are aiming for straight up high yield investing. And the number one thing is if you want to live off of your dividends faster right now, you need to aim for higher yielding stocks and ETFs. Personally, the way that I am playing this game is I am kind of investing in some high yield stocks. Like we can check my portfolio right now. If you go to my income fund, this is just high yield ETFs. You can see the dividend yield average is 5.903, but things like XYLD range from like a 9% yield, QYLD with a 10% yield, Spidey with like a 5-6% yield, and Jeppy has about a 7-8% yield. So these are some high, higher yielding stocks and ETFs. But if you go right here onto things such as, we'll look right here on consumer and stores. These are some high yield, like Mo with a 7% yield, but Home Depot's got like a 1% yield. Lowe's has like a 2-1% yield, I believe. Looking on some more things, you can see tech and cloud computing. We'll see Apple has like not even 1% yield. Same thing goes for Microsoft and NVIDIA. These are my dividend growth plays that I'm hoping for them to pay me far more in the long-term future, but I also am playing with a mixed yield giving my current portfolio an average dividend yield of 3.451%. That is the first thing. If you want to, you're going to have to go find higher yielding stocks. Now, please don't just go yield chasing. Make sure the investments can sustain the dividend payments. Looking at stocks with low payout ratios, anything below 70% should be sustainable. REITs can go up to 80 90% because they kind of have to, but that's just something to keep in mind. Higher yield usually does mean lower growth, but it gives you the pro that you can instantaneously collect more dividend income. Just a few good examples on why doing this is such a good strategy. You can look on an ETF like QYLD, Global X Funds, Global X NASDAQ 100 Covered Call ETF. They currently have a dividend yield of 10.34%, which is massive. Now, just taking some math to show you the potential that you can get with dividend yields like this that are sustainable, you got a $5,000 investment. You divide that by QYLD share price of $22.82 per share. That gives you 219.11 shares. You multiply that by their dividend payments on an annual basement of $2.36. What does that give you? That gives you $517.09 in annual income, strictly off of a $5,000 investment. That's incredible returns. And QYLD has been actually share price appreciating this year up 8.25% on the past year and up 0.09% year to date. So still making incredible returns on your money. Looking onto some more ETFs you can find are XYLD with a 9.15 yield and Jeppy with a 7.28% yield. Just a few things to look at. Now let's talk about number two on this list, which is selling options. Sell cash secured puts and covered calls and reinvest all of your premiums collected. Now I will make a video in the future talking about how to sell cash care puts and covered calls. It's really not that complicated, but what you do is I'll just kind of simply explain it. I won't go deep into it, but just so you have a brief understanding of this, you want to find stocks that are uptrending or ETFs 
Usually, if you find a triple leverage ETF, you can see right here, Robin is telling me this is leveraged. So what this means is that it's pretty much they use margin, they use leverage to make bigger gains, but that also does mean they will take bigger losses in the case of a bear market. So the options are going to be a little bit more volatile, leading to higher premiums. And if I wanted to sell a call, let's say the share price is $93 per share, expiring November 5th, which is this Friday, as I'm currently recording this on Sunday, Halloween. Let's say I don't think that TNA is going to go above $96 per share by this Friday. So what do I do? I sell a covered call. And in order to sell a covered call, you need to own at least 100 shares of the stock or ETF you want to sell that call on. So in this example, I have 100 shares of TNA that I would be willing to sell at the strike price of $96 per share. Whatever your strike price is on a covered call is the share price that you're willing to sell these shares at. And then what do I do? I get a credit of $137. That means that $137 is going right into my brokerage account. And I suggest if you sell covered calls and cash your care puts, you need to be reinvesting these premiums collected. This literally, it's just free money that they're handing out. And if you take profits, buy the stock or whatever, start to sell cash your care puts, do this. That is whenever you're saying you will buy those shares. You don't own the shares yet. You could own them, but you could just say, I don't think it's going to hit $90 per share, but if it does, I'll buy these shares at $90. So what am I going to do? I'm going to sell this call. I'm going to sell this cash card put, and I'm going to pay it $144 just for doing this. Now, if on November 5th market close, the share price is above $90 per share, you don't have to pay. You just get your $144 no matter what. You can take it out of your account if you really wanted to, but I highly suggest that you reinvest these monies and then or if it goes below then you'll have to pay $90 per share even if the share price was $88 per share and that's the risk that you bear with these trades and that's but also you're getting paid so it's got its pros and its cons but I really suggest that you take these credits and you reinvest them and it's a great way to build your portfolio faster third reinvest dividends I can't stress that enough if you don't reinvest your dividends at least not when you're starting you're missing out on so much upside potential. The difference in between an investment from 1960 to 2020 of $10,000 with reinvested dividends and without, and just the S&P 500, the portfolio without reinvested dividends ended up at $636,000, I believe. The portfolio with reinvested dividends ended up at $3.8 million. That's a massive gap. That's a massive difference. Okay, reinvest your dividends. Let your dividend income stack on top of each other. They're giving you money to invest more money, to make more money. So take advantage of the opportunities and capitalize on them. And fourth, cut unnecessary expenses and find a way to make extra income. If you have subscriptions that you never use, paying for apps that you never do this or that, cut those expenses, you don't need them. Find a way to make extra income. Some A good app I use, and I'm not affiliated with them by any means, is Mint. I use it personally, it just tells me like personal net worth, expenses, how much I'm spending on this and that. It's a great way to keep control of your personal finances and finding a way to make extra income. That could mean asking for a raise at your current job or finding a second part-time job, finding a side hustle, doing anything that it can be to just do this, you know, selling cash card puts and covered calls. That's extra income. Do everything that you can. Work hard now, reap the benefits later, and your portfolio will be paying you passive income sooner than you'd expect. Now have a long-term outlook. Don't expect to get rich quick because it's not necessarily a get rich quick scheme, but it is a get rich quick, get rich for sure. So be patient. Patience pays. That's all I can say when it comes to dividend investing. But everybody, that's what I have for you in this video. So if you did enjoy it, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe. Turn on post notifications for videos coming out every other day. I'm trying to give as much value as I possibly can sharing my passion for dividends with you, helping you build your portfolios. Thank you again so much for making it to the end of the video. Check out links in the description for some free money, free stocks, and even my portfolio. Thank you again, and I'll see you at the next video.